All right, so yeah, so as Matt was saying, so today I'll talk about women in science and specifically I'll talk about how can we get more women into science. And I'm very excited that we have very young people here in the front because this is going to be especially for them and the new generations. So as Matt said, so I'm Vanessa Lopez Barquero and I'm a uh, postdoc here at the Institute of Astronomy. All right. So the first thing that I want us to do today is use our imagination. So please now close your eyes, close your eyes, everybody close your eyes. And then imagine, you know, if I tell you picture a scientist, picture a very famous scientist, you know, have the like image in, in your mind and now open your eyes. Does it look something like this perhaps, <laughs> right? This is what we have in our mind probably when we are told, you know, imagine a famous scientist. So we have, you know, uh, Albert Einstein. All right, second exercise. So again, close your eyes. And then now imagine a female scientist, a very famous female scientist, right? Have that image in your mind. Open your eyes again. Does it look something like this, maybe? Mary Curie, right? So, and of course, you know, like she's the first woman that got a Nobel Prize, first person to get a Nobel Prize in two different categories. Uh, for her work in radioactivity, so, you know, it's worth it that we have this, right? But what if I ask you to imagine more female scientists, more famous female scientists, right? S stuff starts to get a little bit tricky. So maybe it would look something like this, right? Maybe we have in our minds um, Jane Goodall, um, famous primatologist that has worked with uh, chimpanzees for more than 60 years. Or if you are more uh, like mathematics inclined, maybe you're thinking about Demi Nota, that she, is, um, she was a very famous uh, German mathematician, that she did this amazing work in trying to uh, relate symmetries in the universe to the conservation laws, right? So we have perhaps this picture when we talk about female scientists. The problem with this picture is that, as you can see, they're all uh, white women, right? So our society is not like this, right? We have a society that is very diverse and we want uh, science to also reflect what the society is. So perhaps the picture may look something like this, right? So for example, here on the top, we have Katherine Johnson, black American mathematician that she worked for NASA calculating uh, the orbits and doing work with trajectories to help some NASA missions. Uh, or also someone like Bim Buti that uh, she's a uh, plasma physicist from India, very famous. Or I also put Sandra Kaufman because she's from Costa Rica and I'm from Costa Rica, so I want to promote her. Uh, she's a uh, deputy director of NASA for the astrophysics division, right? So, you know, so this is a picture that compresses a little bit more of what society is actually and what science should be, right? So in reality, the picture should look more like this, you know, very diverse, people from multiple backgrounds, multiple ethnicities, uh, different gender identities, right? Uh, the problem is that science currently doesn't look like this, right? And, and this is something that we have to start working on, right? So what can we do so that the scientific community and science overall may look like this? And it's not only because what can we do so that it looks like a pretty picture, but it's actually uh, very important because like science actually benefits from having people from different backgrounds, right? So diverse ideas that come from a diverse background of people actually uh, help science develop, right? So it's not only about diversity for itself, but it's also because uh, science would actually benefit from, uh, from diversity. All right, so to get started, I want to uh, give you guys my background because this is very important when we're talking about inclusivity and when we're talking about diversity. Because like we all have our different backgrounds, we all have our different experiences and they're all valid. But because of that, we have uh, different paths that can lead us to like think about different things, right? So I'll give you my background and then you can all start thinking about your own backgrounds, right? So uh, I come from Costa Rica, but I study in the US, so most of my adult life I uh, studying in the US and I also live in Brazil and then now I'm here in the UK. And as I said, this is, this is very important because it's good to think about what your own 
um, experiences are, right? For example, like the fact that I live in these places is different than, for example, that a physicist that comes from Uganda or a physicist that comes from Indonesia. So we have to think about all these different experiences that people have. For example, like yesterday, I attended this panel discussion about uh, women in Afghanistan. And basically, women in Afghanistan are now hostages in their own homes. They don't have access to any education, right? So my experience is going to be completely different than their experience and the experiences that most people have here, right? So this is something that we should always take into account. What is our level of privilege? But also what are the different circumstances, maybe difficult circumstances that we have always, um, we all have been through, right? So just keep this in mind, like, you know, when you go to your house today, like, just like think about like, what are my privileges? What are the difficulties that I have faced? And how can I actually use these experiences to help other women or help other people from uh, backgrounds different than my own, right? Okay, so, so why, why do we talk about women in science and why is there a problem with the idea uh, of women in science, right? Why I'm even like talking to you, to you about this. So I'll give you these two examples that are um, in professional settings. So the first one here on the left, so it's about the International Astronomical Union. And this is the union of astronomers around the world. And so here you have the country and the percentage of the delegation that is female. And as you can see here, for example, Argentina has 30% of the delegation that is female. You know, not too bad. But if you go to the case of Japan, it's only 6%. Uh, US and UK are here around 12%, and most uh, uh, member countries is around 15%, right? So there are a lot of women here that are missing from working in astronomy. If we look here on the right, so we have women in physics in different stages. So for example, here we have undergraduate, PhD students, and faculty. And like for example, if we take the case of the US, so we have that only 21% uh, of undergraduate students are female. And this drops to 16% when we're talking about faculty. Even worse for the UK, so we have 21% for undergrads, but only 11% of faculty, right? So this is a clear problem that we have to address. And the idea is that, I mean, we can start working with people when they're already in university, when they're already like faculty. But the, the main idea that I want to emphasize today is that we have to start this support very early on, you know, these kids here in the, in the front, they're the ones that we have to concentrate in. And then, of course, we have to concentrate on the people that are like 10, 15, 18, 20, 30, you know, everything. But we have to concentrate and start very early on. And again, so we have to ensure that we have the support across the academic and professional years. Okay, so this is the main idea that I want to talk about today. All right, so to talk about it, I don't want to do it very abstract because you know I can tell you here about the million statistics, but I want to tell you about my own experiences and the projects that I have actually worked on, and that you can get inspiration to start working on projects that are similar or with similar ideas. Okay. So one of the projects that I wanted to tell you about is a project called Expanding Your Horizons, where we target girls that are around 10 to 13 years old. And this age is extremely important because this is the age where women start to get discriminated in the classroom. So when they start to turn 10, 12, that's when um, they're starting to see that perhaps science is not for them because the society tells them, right? So this is why it's so important to have these girls 10 to 13 years old to be included in the process of science. So for this project that we have, uh, so some of the objectives were like, for example, like first of all, um, emphasize that careers in science are actually for them. If these women and these girls are actually interested in science, so we have to promote this interest for them, right? Uh, we also want them to see us as role models, but not only as a scientist, but also as like, just like simple like people, right? That we have, you know, science is only one facet of what we do, but we're actually, you know, like we have a lot of interests that are very uh, similar to what they actually like as well. So, um, and the other objective that it was very important for this project is to uh, take into account people with limited resources. And this is something that sometimes is not, uh, is not talked about, but it's actually it's, it's, it's very relevant because it's not the same if you have a girl that is 10 that comes from a low income household that, for example, like 
Um, her parents were two, three jobs, and that's someone that has, you know, uh, that comes from a high income um, household where, like, for example, like the parents may be able to take them to any event at any time of the day, but someone from a household that both parents work uh, like the whole day, you know, so this person cannot do that. So this is why it was very important to like promote inclusivity in these different aspects, you know, like how science can come into their um, into their lives and also take into account all the backgrounds of people that we're talking about. So, so the project here it consisted of like it was it was very simple, but I, I think girls were really interested in that. So what we did is that we work with experiments and we made it very interactive so we were so it was like you know maybe like a classroom for like maybe like 50 girls and then it was like us scientists working with them and we were like talking to them and at the same time we were talking about like our hobbies and like what do we do like for example like i told them that i like for example like i was at that time i was teaching a course in physics of the music right so like i, I would tell them about it so they were very interested, and this is why uh, it was this idea of dismystifying the idea of the scientists, right? That we're not just like some weird people, like in some like dark, like I don't know, room or something, a lab in the middle of nowhere, not talking to people, but we actually were able to interact with them. And specifically, like for example, like for these experiments, we'll work with like cameras because some of them would be very interesting in photography. Uh, we also work with musical instruments because some of them were also involved in music. So through these different things that they already have in their lives, so we we're trying to tell them that, I mean, if you like, for example, music, then you can also work in that as a scientist, right? If you like photography, you can work on that as a scientist, right? So it's not very separate from their own experiences. Okay, so the other thing that it was very important, it was that now when these girls are turning like 15 to 18, these are the point where they're starting to decide their future, right? They're starting to decide on their careers. So what we did is that we had this uh, internship program where we will bring these people, in this case it was not only girls, but we have everybody coming uh, and working with us. And we have these people working like, you know, perhaps a simple project, but it was a project that it would like directly um, link them to science, right? And this was, again, very important because at this age, they're going to start to uh, make these decisions that are for life. And I just wanted to include why it's so important to include women at this stage. Because, for example, if we take here um, the results for the, the physics A-level in the UK. So what we have here is that, uh, so in the case for physics, so we have three times as many boys as girls that took physics A-levels in the UK. This is for the year 2018. As you can see, we are missing all these women, right? So this is, this is exactly the target that we need to work on. Um, in the case of like my country, so Costa Rica, so for STEM careers, so we have the first years where, um, so women only comprise like 32%, which is actually good if you take into account that like worldwide it's around like perhaps like 20%, 50%, right? So we're, we need to incorporate all of these women that are missing, all of these women that are missing. Okay, so, so I talk about these projects that, you know, like you, we can do here at the university or perhaps we can do like in middle school. And, but what about when we're at home, when we're in, like with our family, with our friends, right? This is an experience that we all have. So what should we do in those settings? Um, first of all, the most important thing that you can do is to support women. So if your daughter that is like perhaps like 14 comes and tells you that she really liked this like article that she read, or she saw like, I don't know, this TikTok that talked about like something in science, so support that idea. Like try to like, you know, talk to her about it. Because it, these, these little things can actually have a uh, great repercussions in their lives. Um, another important aspect that is very important is this idea of mentorship. So if you're someone that is like perhaps 18 and then you're thinking about like, should I go into science, should I not? I have all these questions, but I don't know. I, I really don't know what a uh, scientist does or how I can get information. So find mentors, you know. It's not, you know, like all our emails for like almost all scientists are like, you know, on the websites. 
So there are ways to like kind of contact people. So and it's super important to have mentors in your life. These are the people that actually will serve as a role model and will make things look a little bit easier than it actually are. And the other aspect that I want to include is this idea of scholarships. Because I had this experience when I was uh, started working with um, Hispanic people in the US and a lot of these people, you know, they, they, they had, a, you know, they were coming from low income households and they thought that university was not for them because they didn't have the money to pay for it. And, you know, in some cases this is true, but also they didn't know about all the scholarships that actually exist to support uh, people from diverse backgrounds. So I think this is something that is very important because these people historically has been, have been marginalized and excluded from university. So this is why it's very important to talk about scholarships and different uh, funding opportunities. So again, if you're at home with your family, with your friends, please support women, tell them about mentorship, and also you know, all the different funding opportunities that they can have to actually become part of science. So just for my final remarks, so the, the first thing is, so start early. You know, if, you know, I, I, like, I remember that I started to get interested when I was like five years old. And then by seven, like my parents brought me like a telescope and a chemistry kit and everything, you know? So it's worth it to start early. And if you see like, for example, if you're gonna buy a toy for like your kid, you know, just think about what kind of toy you're buying for your kid. This is important. And these little, little details, they are gonna have huge repercussions later. Um, again, these mentorship programs, find a mentor, try to like find someone to help you out because, you know, like some things that are difficult are not that difficult. You find someone to guide you. Um, and again, support at all ages. So from like, you know, a baby that is like one year old to like a girl that is 10, 18, 20, 25, 30, you know, everybody needs support. So, and again, I also wanted to link this to the idea that I told you about the privilege that some of us have, right? So if you, if you feel like you are a point of privilege that you can actually help someone out, so please uh, think about that. And the last point that I want to emphasize in these final remarks is that we should talk about women in science, right? Like when we, I don't know, if we read something, then let's think about like who is actually behind this work. If you run into like, for example, a piece of uh, information that you feel that is interesting and is written by a woman, so discuss it with your colleagues, discuss it with other people, you know? So that this idea that we have first, you know, that we talk only about like scientists and we only have Albert Einstein in our heads, it's not, it's not like that, right? So just try to like incorporate this into your daily life. All right, so thank you so much for the attention and I'll take your questions.